um, by the fact that she found Rick and Carl right after making that choice. But right from then on, when Rick was like, you know, I'm glad I heard, I just heard Carl laugh with you and I thank you for that because, you know, I know, I know you, you, you might need to take your breaks because she used to take breaks and ride her horse away. Mm -hmm. and, and she said to him, I'm done taking breaks. And I really think that from that moment on, she took on the responsibility of being more vulnerable to the fact that I'm gonna be with these people, I'm gonna invest in this, you, this, this community, and it might result in more losses, but I'm gonna do it because this is what I do best. I connecting with people and, and caring for them and protecting them is what I do best. And so I, I just don't think she's shut down anymore. I think she expresses her love um, in very clear ways. Uh, she's very, um, she wanted to, she told Rick we have to go to Alexandria because we're gonna die out here. And she, t she got in his face about that. And you know, she decided um, when Rick was getting a little out of control and could possibly hurt himself, to knock him out. But really, she was giving him a time out <laughs> so that he wouldn't do any too much damage uh, to, to himself. It was really for him. And so she, I think she's very specific and clear about how she expresses her love. That's a better description. Yeah. She's very specific about it. Like she, she doesn't clear. mull around it. She's not trying to figure out. Everyone else is standing around watching him lose it and beat yeah. the guy up and wave a gun around. And she makes the clear decision to shut it down. And she does shut it down. And because, because she knows that something has to be done and she'll she'll just do it. But um, yeah, but I don't I don't think of her as shut down anymore. Not at all. Not at all. I think she's you know, she's quite um, her love for Carl and and for you know people as, as a whole, I think is, is pretty evident. And I have to say, it is your show. It, it's so nice, like as a woman, to watch it because it's got the female characters on the show are so well developed and so well written and very well acted. It's, that must be incredibly rewarding for you as a writer and an actor to inhabit yeah, I mean, that. Yeah, you know, I think as an artist, you know, you hope for the best. You know, you, you when you sign um, sign on to be on a TV show for possibly multiple seasons. Mm -hmm. You really are entrusting uh, a lot of yourself to a creative process and to creators that have that ability to, to do what you're saying. And so I think myself and, and Ms. Cohen and Ms. Martin Green and, and Ms. McBride and, and all the other wonderful ladies on the show, we are very, very fortunate because we get to be, we are entrusted to creators and to writers who create story on the page who really do understand mm -hmm. how complex women are and who are co and constantly in pursuit of finding new different ways and specific ways for each of us to be able to live in that. And I, I know that that is not the case in every circumstance. So I, I, I do feel very grateful for that. That's a very nice way of putting it. That's not the case in every circumstance. Very polite, I like that. <laughs> um, and before we go to the audience portion, let's talk about Love Your Girls. Right, uh, well yeah, I'm a, Valentine's baby. I was born on Valentine's Day. It's um, been the case my whole life. And, and that's uh, why the show's premiering on Valentine's Day. It's a gift. Yeah, that's like my birthday present. It's a kind of an interesting uh, co, co um, experience there. But uh, also, uh, actually, because of a Walking Dead fan, I, I've always had a passion about, for love and for girls and, and women across the globe. I'm Zimbabwean by heritage and upbringing, American by birth. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always, all my plays are about the African female voice, which is very uh, absent, I felt, which is why I started to try to create stories around them and let them be seen and heard. But lately, I really felt convicted to take my advocacy for, to another level. Uh, and part of it was because, not only because of a lot of the statistics I've been coming across concerning women and girls around the world, issues like how we still have 62 million girls who can't go to school across the globe, which just it's it boggles the mind, right? it boggles the mind that we're in such an advanced age, and yet the half, you know, more than half of our population is still dealing with that type of uh, disadvantage. Uh, the issues of child brides and how 14 million girls in 2014 alone, under the age of 18, became child brides, and the fact that we're still dealing with these types of issues right here in the United States. 50% of sexual assaults are on girls under the age of 15. Uh, these are sort of issues that it really it hit, started to hit me really hard, and I, I really was like, how is there? How can I up my own ante concerning my advocacy? And there was a girl I met when I was at a Comic Con, a convention, and she um, was at a Q and A, and she asked me a question that really hit me about stepping into her own sense of confidence and how she felt I had that, and how she was very concerned about how to get that there herself and understand her purpose in the world and 
and, and how she didn't always like what she saw when she looked in the mirror. And, and I realized that there is a very, it is a very hard time for girls everywhere, not just where I'm from on the continent, or, but everywhere in terms of stepping into a, 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 an authentic confidence and stepping into a sense of purpose and power, which is so powerful for a girl to do. Uh, and I, I just really felt I needed to try to make more of an advocate of myself. So um, LGPledge.org is a very, very simple attempt at this. Really for you and I and those of us who, you know, we, I'm not saying we go and create a new UN women. They are, they're doing a very good job. There's so many amazing organizations doing a good job. What can you and I do in that sense? And LGPledge.org is just a place where you sign up to get information sent to you constantly or at, on a monthly basis at least about the issues around women and girls, the wonderful things that could be happening and the things that are very, distressing and that you make a pledge to let that information leave your hands and go on to others whatever resonates with you and uh, that's all it is it really is just a simple awareness campaign to say we can't have any change without information. knowledge and information and we can't do anything until we start to love our girls so that's why I made girls and women my Valentine this year oh, yeah.